the new Hope Tuscan Raider. Um, the bandoliers they were. One of them is borrowed from Lawrence of Arabia. It's the one with all the eyelets. That's the one we're going to do today. It's an easy bandolier. There's nothing too complicated about it. Um, it's a lot of tedious work. This one's a lot of gluing. There's only stitching is going to be along the little bullet holders. Everything else is glued in place. It's simple. It's easy. I'm using a cheap couch leather. Found a couch, skinned it, and uh, cut pieces up. I'll show you the uh, pattern, or pattern, or, or what I use for mine. It's not difficult, and I think we can do this. This is where we're at so far. I got one strip. It is, uh, it's been seamed in the middle just because I didn't have a piece long enough. It's roughly 38 inches long. It's three and a half inches wide. So when I fold this over, it'll give a three inch bandolier with a finished seam. I don't do it on the top because the top has the flaps that fold over and cover the seam anyway. If you're using thicker, actual, you know, decent leather, you don't need to do this part because you can just burnish the edge. We need 10 little flaps. I recently got a laser cutter, so, you know, I cut myself an acrylic template. Here's the paper template of, of what we're doing. So it's 10 pouches. Each pouch has four eyelets and one snap. I don't use snaps, I use brads because they don't need to come up and closed. Once they're there, they're there. Um, each one gets five little bullet holders and a rivet at the bottom. It's easy. There's nothing super spectacular about it. We need another belt because the belt is the uh, part that connects, you know, to what makes it wearable. So I'm gonna move you over a little bit and I'm gonna start punching holes. I use actual dies for this. They've got the, the, the crimping kind. I'm not as ver I'm not as fond of those as I am of these. I'd rather just punch out holes and punch out holes. You can drill them too, but I've never tried that. Maybe I'll give that a try one of these times. Just not this time. So like I said, we have 10 pouches. I'm gonna show you one in real time. And then we're gonna speed through the rest of them. It's just an old cutting board. And then we just take eyelets. Come on. And push them through. You don't have to use silver. You can use gold or brass or bronze or copper or whatever you want. Silver's just what I have. I have gold brads for the front, so I'm probably gonna end up silvering those up. Just a simple crimp tool. So you crimp it the right way. We had a brad in. That's what it's going to look like. So, just going to blast through the next few. Take me a couple minutes. Should be pretty quick for you, though.
So it's all the hammering taken care of. I guess that's all the hammering taken care of. In retrospect, I should have grabbed the neck size up for my punch. Eh. I do it almost every time. Then I fight with these. Just to get them in. C'est la vie. There's a K sera sera. So the question now becomes, do I fight with the next frickin' six, or do I just grab the punch and punch them all? So we're just gonna punch them all again. My six, I take a second. And this teaches us, always use the right piece. The middle ones are fine, so I only have to do the outsides. get ahead of myself we're gonna punch these to make sure that the backside crimps properly that'll be fine So if you look, you got a weird extra crimp here. That's because these are a little too small for my eyelets. I could find the right punch, but uh, not in the mood. Eyelid's done. This is the back side. Each flap is a quarter inch apart and it comes down one inch. These come up one inch. They're completely connected. Contact cement. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Just gonna brush on a bunch of contact cement. Well ventilated area. 
beautiful spring day. Birds are out chirping, bees are out flying around. It's fantastic, unless you're trying to film. So with contact cement, you put down a nice light layer, give it about 10 minutes to cure. It'll look dry, it's not. Connect the two pieces together, hit it with a rubber mallet. Contact cement works better when it's pressure activated. And that's it. I used to come back by with a stitch, just, you know, because I felt it would be more secure. It's not. Contact cement is way strong enough to handle flaps that don't open. I have a hard time reminding myself this is just a costume, and I keep trying to make a functional piece. Joys of being left-handed. All right, now we gotta give it a couple minutes. Let it do its thing. So, everything looks nice and, and matte. No real glossy points. At this point, we're just lining them up, sticking them down. And there's a couple of spots that are still, you know, wet. That's fine. The other parts will uh, bond and hold it in place while uh, that little bit of glue sets up. Now we hit it with a hammer. Not too shabby. This goes right there. It's a little snug, but that's fine. There we go. So what I've done is I've marked down half an inch and then one inch in between every pocket. We're gonna stitch one inch wide strips. These are kind of short. I'm trying to use up some scrap, so it is what it is. I have a leather needle on, and I'm just gonna go slow. Stitch to the end, move to the next stitch. After I rethread my needle. Go up, cut. So we want kind of a gap here. I usually just put a Sharpie in and then move over to the next line. So put a Sharpie in over here, since our next line is right here, line that up and just stitch. Move your Sharpie. Next line and stitch. Now, since I'm using smaller pieces, I have to overlap things. Let's see what I mean when I get to that point. In fact, we're at that point. What am I doing? I did not think I would do that. My machine is not happy with doing more than two pieces of leather. Come on, nice and easy. We'll do it. We'll just complain about it. I think it gets it for me. I like rolling everything, just because that way I don't have to have it all loose and exposed. It's just easier to deal with. I need a 3D printer holder for that thing.
Now this happens every now and again. We're going through multiple layers. My uh, bottom bobbin didn't catch at all. So we're just gonna do that again. Go the other way. So as long as we get the bottom and the top to hold in place. That's all we really need. Let's see what we got. Well, it worked that time. Now for the last one. So at this point, snip off the extra leather. Make sure you leave a little hanging out just so it doesn't tear out. And there we go. So this is where we're at. Next step is to fold over every pouch and put a mark on the piece underneath. This is now where we need to punch our final holes for the brads. And somewhere along the line, my hole placement got mixed up on my laser cutter. I'm not overtly happy with where these are, but you know, it's a learning process. Right when we thought we were done. Nope. So we're just gonna hit these on every mark. not want to cut through the lumber. Jeez Louise, still doesn't want to. This one doesn't work very well. None of them do. That's why I prefer to use the, uh, the punch tool. So we're just going to punch all these holes. Luckily there's only 10 of them. I'm going to spare you the agony of watching me do this. Okay, so here's where we are. I've measured up one inch from the bottom and put marks. That's where we're gonna sew. For these, it's just a brad. It's been pushed in and opened all the way up. So the next step is to take our thin half inch strips and just sew every loop like that. It doesn't matter how, how big your, your, your loops are, I go to anywhere from three quarter to an inch in between, so three quarter to for every half. You'll see what I mean. Of course my neighbor decided to do weed eating right now. So this will more than likely be voiceover or not. This is where things get weird. We're gonna pull this back, give us a loop. Line up the next one, drop it down and stitch. That's a bit much.
All right, let's take a second, fluff these up a little bit, and that is what you get. Basically, we just want to keep doing this the whole length, and uh, that's all there is to it. So that's it for the sewing. At this point we're just going to trim up all these little strings. Next we're going to attach, we're going to fold this over and attach the belt at the same time. So we take our belt, we're going to have one end go this way like this. We'll continue on and we have the other end go at an angle. So we're going to go right about probably here everything over now keep in mind half of this half inch here gets folded over so we want to measure even it out you'll see what I mean in a second we have to pretend that this half inch isn't there right now we contact cement this 
and this together. Now we wait for the glue to dry, and let it do its thing. This is a perfect example or perfect use case for belts that don't quite fit the snout, but you still kind of like. Works perfect here. Here's a close up of how we're folding the edge in. All we do is fold this over like that and mark it. So all of this now gets contact cemented in place. This side, we're gonna do the same thing, except we fold over the half inch we have down here as well. So that gives us our nice finished edge. Fold that to there. We'll mark this first. Now we apply contact cement all along here and there. We also want to go the full edge along the bottom here at about an inch. We, we go up an inch, that way when we fold it over, it's still half an inch. Give it about 10 minutes, let it cure, and we close everything up. So we just fold it over and press. It's not fully cured, but I am impatient. Since it's gonna wanna open up, I don't mind putting a couple of spring clamps just to make sure everything stays nice and closed for a little bit. If you wait till the glue is fully cured, this doesn't really happen, but I'm just being impatient. I know, right? Shocker. Now we let it cure for a good 10 minutes. Just let it do its thing. So while that's doing that, we're gonna work on the other end. We want the belt to come out this way. So it comes towards the top of the flaps. So this gets folded over. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this whole thing and the bottom half of the belt here, or bottom chunk, not half, I'm sorry. And we're going to want to do this in stages. So we start with gluing the belt down. With leather, if you put multiple layers of contact cement down, you can you can use the first one as kind of a base, just a, a light pre-coat. Let it cure, glue it on. Okay. Make sure you put top side out. Glue this puppy down. And we'll figure out hospital corners at this point. Because we want this to get folded, the bottom to get folded up, right? And while that's happening, we need to bring this over. So let's just snip with the bad scissors. Alright. Another bit of glue. Put some glue on here again. Just to let it cure, another five minutes. Fold this over, secure it in place, and that's about it. We're gonna flip it over, beat it with a hammer. It's easier to do on this side, you know, the rivet sticking up.
I don't trust glue, not just glue. So we're gonna put a couple rivets in here too. But before we do, find the right size. Looks good. And like we should have done with the other one, we find the right size of these two. I got through a lot of leather here, so it could take a minute. I'm only putting two in on this side and then three in on the other. Let's try something different. Let's try some drill bits. Nice sacrificial piece underneath. Hmm. See the Verk did not. Looks like it did. I also need a screw. So far so good. It doesn't seem to thread very well. I'm not going to blame the drill bit for that. Okay, the drill bit works fantastic. Keep that in mind. For the goodness. All right. It's too thick. Kind of too thick. Right. Let's see how one looks up here. Most of the time, I don't even put these in, just because it's a small detail that doesn't add that much to the costume. We're going on this one, just a cuz. So in between each pouch, we drill, we put one of these. There should be nine all together. I'm going to skip the middle one.
So there you have it. Tuscan Raider belt. The little corner flap like this, I always feel helps it lay on your hip better. A um, couple of the eyelets have popped out. I'm going to leave them out. It's a it's a Tuscan. They're they're supposed to be a little little disheveled. Not bad for half afternoon's worth of work. So, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Looks good. You should make one.